Yes, hello once again. Welcome back to Classic Dirt Bike uh, TV. And uh, we are uh, currently in the process of uh, just uh, waiting on a brand new racing season getting underway, which will be happening hopefully in the next uh, few weeks and we can get out and about and uh, film uh, more of these old uh, vintage uh, classics for my channel. But until then, uh, we've uh, picked a few select uh, bikes from this year's Telford show and we've already had a look at a lovely uh, ATK uh, two-stroke machine. So uh, next time round, it's uh, going to be Steve Coughlin's uh, 1988 RM250 Suzuki. So uh, let's jump straight into that video now and uh, take a look. Right, OK, so as I just mentioned, this uh, was another uh, very nice classic that I spotted at Telford this year. And this uh, 1988 RM250 Suzuki it was completely uh, rebuilt by Steve uh, Coughlin. And Steve used uh, quite a lot of brand new old stock parts uh, to rebuild uh, this bike. And it uh, took Steve quite a few years uh, to gather all of the bits and pieces together to build this bike. And it's only recently that he's just managed to finish it and uh, put it on display. So the story goes that uh, Steve bought this bike back in October of 2011 for just £500. And uh, the reason that he was actually interested in the bike at all was because he actually raced one uh, back in the day. And at that time, he'd always thought that this uh, was a fantastic little uh, machine to ride. And he'd always uh, fancied another one that he could uh, maybe uh, ride again or possibly even uh, restore. So uh, it was after he saw an advert for this RM250 that uh, Steve immediately then handed over his £500 without even seeing a picture uh, of the bike. But besides, uh, the seller had promised Steve at that time that all of the parts were present and correct and that generally uh, the bike, uh, the seller said, uh, only really needed uh, tidying up. So anyhow, a few days later, uh, Steve's bike uh, arrived uh, on a pallet, uh, which uh, certainly lo looked more like a, a pile of spare motorcycle parts and a complete machine. And uh, basically, this is what Steve had been sent uh, through the post. Various parts of a 1988 RM250 that certainly needed a little bit more uh, than a tidy up. And uh, to say the least, Steve wasn't that impressed and he was so disgusted at the state of the parts that he basically then just threw the lot into the corner of his workshop where it then lay for the next few weeks. Anyhow, sometime later, after Steve had calmed down ever so slightly, he began to take stock of his recent purchase and it was then that he decided that rather than have a tatty second-hand old RM that uh, he was now going to give uh, what was left of the old Evo Suzuki uh, the full restoration treatment and bring back some of those memories of when he owned one of these bikes uh, all those years ago. And so in the following years, uh, Steve then embarked uh, on a one-man crusade just to try and uh, collate and restore uh, all of the parts that he'd need uh, to rebuild uh, what he said it was going to be one of the best 88 RM250s in uh, the UK. And just to collect all of the Suzuki parts together, it took Steve six years and uh, 11 years after he first bought the pallet of Suzuki parts, he was now uh, just about ready uh, to put the bike uh, back together. So in these uh, few pictures here that uh, Steve uh, took of the Suzuki parts soon after uh, they'd arrived, you could see that they certainly needed a little bit more than a tidy up, as the previous owner had suggested. Although I suppose uh, one person's view of a bike uh, needing a little tidy up may not be uh, the view that's shared uh, by the buyer. And uh, I have to admit that if it was me personally who'd bought this bike in this kind of state, uh, I wouldn't be best pleased either. Although having said that, I suppose in the seller's defence, uh, Steve did uh, buy this bike, uh, or at least these parts of the bike, uh, sight unseen. So 
uh, he basically just handed over his £500 and then he took his chances and this uh, was the result. And you don't have to be a fully qualified mechanic to see that uh, our old 88 RMs uh, certainly had a hard life with uh, most of the parts uh, worn out or at the very least in dire need of some uh, long overdue uh, R and R. And that is, of course, uh, refurb and restoration. But uh, after many years of web searching and uh, calling on his uh, many contacts that he knows from his days uh, on the racetrack, uh, Steve still managed to collect together uh, many uh, new old stock uh, bits and pieces, some of which are now almost impossible uh, to find uh, nowadays, like this uh, brand new airbox and other things like original uh, plastics and a brand new uh, seat. But Steve uh, somehow still managed it, and uh, although a large percentage of the components that have gone into restoring this bike are uh, new old stock parts, uh, some of the others uh, that he couldn't find, then he just simply uh, restored uh, the original uh, 1988 components that came uh, with the bike. So at the end of the day, this was still uh, eventually uh, going to be uh, more or less a brand new RM250 from 1988. So when Steve eventually got down to rebuilding the bike, naturally he began with the bike chassis, which was first inspected for any damage or wear and any remedial work that was needed was done before it was then all blasted clean and then powder coated in this lovely Suzuki blue color. Now, these few pictures here supplied uh, by Steve were uh, taken uh, during its uh, early period of construction. And you can see that uh, even in this early stage with the newly rebuilt engine inside the frame, it's already beginning uh, to take shape. Although these, of course, are uh, just the bare bones of the bike as it was uh, beginning to take shape with the frame uh, engine and uh, the front and rear suspension and wheels uh, now fitted and uh, all of the other associated uh, plastics like the front and rear mudguards and the side panels and the seat and of course uh, the fuel tank and radiator scoops were all still to be bolted uh, into place. Now when it came to the actual uh, refurbishment and rebuild of the Suzuki's uh, 250 water-cooled uh, motor. I was never actually uh, told on the day if it was uh, Steve himself who did all the work on this engine, which you can see uh, prior to undergoing restoration. It certainly looked in a pretty uh, dire state, but uh, as with all the other parts on this 88 RM, this engine here uh, had the full rebuild treatment with uh, more or less every single uh, component uh, either refurbished uh, to as new condition or replaced uh, with uh, brand new old stock parts. And uh, soon after the engine's completion, this is uh, what the finished item looked like when it was all put back into that newly restored steel uh, chassis, all looking uh, fantastic uh, once more in this uh, hard wearing Suzuki uh, blue uh, paint, which uh, these motors uh, were, of course, painted with uh, back in 1988. And basically, uh, what Steve ended up here with uh, is a completely brand new RM250 slingshot engine, which is uh, every bit as good, if not better, than when it left uh, Suzuki HQ in uh, that year. And so when all of the bike's uh, other parts were uh, then bolted back uh, onto the chassis, including uh, the original 88 uh, plastics and seat, uh, this is uh, what the finished article uh, turned out like. And uh, Steve uh, brought it along uh, to the Telford show just to let some admiring punters uh, have a quick look at his uh, handiwork and maybe to answer any questions about how it was all uh, put together. And I'm pretty sure that uh, you'll not find another 88 RM250 in this uh, kind of condition because uh, Steve spent years 
uh, getting uh, the bike to look this good, uh, not to mention uh, the ton of money that he'd spent on uh, locating uh, original parts and uh, the refurbishment of the ones uh, that he couldn't replace. So uh, in that respect, uh, you've got to applaud the man uh, for his dedication and commitment to getting uh, the job finished. But uh, what were these RM250s actually like to ride in 1988? Well, uh, if you believe the press reports of that time, then uh, they'll tell you that uh, these 88s uh, steel chassis uh, did tend to flex a little when it was uh, ridden hard and uh, when you got the bike uh, clicked up into the higher gears, uh, a white knuckle grip on the bars was the order of the day and if it was uh, a particularly bumpy racetrack then they say that these uh, chassis uh, could flex and it uh, could eventually lead to the bike uh, swapping ends at just a second's uh, notice. Although if it was uh, a relatively uh, sedate and flat track then our RM250 did tend to behave in a much more uh, respectable manner. And uh, on the flip side, uh, if you'll pardon the pun, uh, the Suzuki's uh, 250 liquid-cooled reed valve induction two-stroke engine was uh, certainly a peach of a motor that uh, I think had a six-horsepower improvement uh, over its 1987 uh, predecessor. And uh, for the late uh, 1980s, uh, this engine here was certainly a belter of a motocross power plant. And uh, to pump all of that premix fuel that was needed to keep our 250 Suzuki engine in its sweet spot, it was a 38mm Makuni slingshot carburetor that had the job of fueling uh, this engine, which uh, was said uh, to give the motor uh, a much better throttle response uh, when you cracked it uh, wide open. Oh, and one other thing about uh, these slingshot carburetors was that uh, in 1988, I think this was the time that McCuney uh, gave uh, this carburetor an idle circuit, uh, which, uh, as I remember, uh, wasn't available on the earlier uh, 1987 bike. And uh, once more, our uh, 250 Suzuki motor had a sort of uh, T-shaped AETC uh, power valve or uh, automatic exhaust timing control if you want to give it its full uh, title which uh, basically was just a valve that opened and closed according uh, to the RPM uh, of the engine and it was quite similar uh, to Yamaha's uh, YB uh, VS system that they used on their bikes uh, in uh, that year. So as we move on to the engine's transmission side, uh, there were uh, two extra clutch plates added uh, to the clutch on this 250 motor for 1988, just to try and uh, beef it up a bit. And there was uh, more improvements uh, onto the gearbox by, uh, they say, fitting stronger uh, detents between the gears to try and uh, stop those accidental or uh, missed shifts, which were uh, quite common on these uh, Suzuki transmissions. But uh, I do remember that uh, it was a five-speed gearbox in this uh, 250 motor. Although for a liquid-cooled uh, two-stroke 250, our Suzuki engine here uh, wasn't exactly perfect by any means, but it was still uh, game enough uh, to give the Honda, Yamahas and Kawasaki's uh, a good run for their money in that year and if you could keep this engine in the mid-range and work uh, the cogs in that gearbox then you could certainly still uh, be racing at the sharp end uh, of the pack when uh, you were chasing uh, that chequered flag. So as we move on to the front end of our 88 RM it was a pair of 43mm Kayaba forks uh, which of course were the cartridge uh, variety and uh, these Kayabas uh, were certainly up there with some of the best motocross suspensions available in uh, that year because uh, they did have some uh, capability to make uh, changes to the rebound and damping which uh, for the 88 was uh, quite a big deal when it came 
to suspension uh, tuning. But uh, if you were a fast and furious rider on one of these 250s back in the day, then you may have found that these forks were maybe a bit on the soft side, but uh, for an average uh, club rider, then uh, these Kayabas uh, were almost uh, perfect. And at the back of the bike, it was a hard anodized piggyback Kayaba single monoshock that, uh, as I remember, I think had a kind of dual valve staging system inside the shock. And the outer spring uh, was certainly a lot heavier and stiffer, and it was fitted uh, to the earlier 87 uh, RM. Now, of course, that Kayaba shock was connected uh, through a linkage onto the Suzuki's uh, full floater uh, swing arm set up here at the back. And uh, for 1988, RM's uh, full floater swing arm and single shock arrangement was about uh, as good as it got in that year. And uh, motocross uh, bike testers of their day still have uh, Suzuki's full floater suspension system listed as uh, one of the best uh, rear suspension setups of uh, that year because it handled uh, bumpy tracks with uh, relative ease and it did have good feedback uh, for the rider with regards to uh, rebound and uh, overall damping. Now the front stoppers on our RM250 were uh, twin piston hydraulic brakes which uh, although they did their job uh, well enough these were Maybe not as good as the CR250 Honda uh, brakes of that same year. Now the back brake, it was just a simple uh, single piston hydraulic uh, stopper. Again, uh, not the best in class uh, for a rear uh, motocross braking system, but uh, uh, certainly with a hefty boot on that rear brake pedal, uh, you could still uh, quite easily uh, lock up this rear wheel uh, in an emergency. And uh, on that subject of the bike's uh, wheels, now uh, these are a couple of the parts that uh, are not the original items that came uh, with this bike because uh, the original uh, alloy rims were uh, in a pretty bad uh, state, uh, all worn out and just far too dangerous uh, to put back on uh, this new bike. So Steve uh, got these gold anodized uh, XL Takasago alloy rims uh, that were then uh, all re-spoked and then fitted back onto the Suzuki's original front and rear hubs. Now when it came to the bike's exhaust expansion chamber which uh, as you can see had been through uh, the motocross wars and it did have plenty signs of frequent repairs and uh, the metal on the pipe was paper thin uh, so this again was replaced uh, by uh, this much better uh, arrow pipe which uh, was more or less a straightforward uh, bolt-on replacement uh, to the stock uh, Suzuki uh, original. Now this brand new expansion chamber of course uh, then uh, led on to this alloy tailpipe here at the back of the bike and uh, this was again uh, swapped for the old worn out and battered Suzuki original. I think this alloy can here uh, looks like it could be another quality item uh, from uh, DEP uh, exhaust systems. Now once again as far as I'm aware this uh, Suzuki seat uh, is a brand new old stock item and uh, this is one of the many parts that Steve uh, eventually managed to find while he was searching the internet for all of the replacement uh, components that he needed to refurbish uh, the bike. So uh, this is a bit like finding uh, Suzuki gold because uh, you just don't come across these kind of very rare items in this uh, modern day. And uh, what's even more surprising is that Steve's hard work and hours of searching the World Wide Web uh, brought yet more RM250 bounty uh, to his bike's refurbishment with a, a completely brand new set of plastics uh, that also included uh, side panels, air scoops and uh, would you believe it, a brand new uh, fuel tank as well. So that certainly uh, saved him having to get all of the old uh, scratched and faded uh, original plastics restored 
uh, by a specialist company. So Steve uh, certainly uh, lucked out when he managed to come across these uh, very rare original uh, plastics. So as we move on to the Riders uh, cockpit, now uh, the original uh, Suzuki bars uh, naturally have been swapped uh, for a much more modern pair of rental bars uh, and I don't think the grips, levers, cables and gasser throttle uh, will still be the same parts from uh, 1988 because uh, if Steve intends to race this bike then you certainly don't want uh, 36 year old uh, cables and controls uh, on this bike when you take it uh, to the track but uh, the parts that are fitted uh, to our RM are certainly all in keeping uh, with the bike's year of manufacture. Although uh, overall uh, the finish on this machine is uh, certainly first class and it's not every day that you manage to see uh, one of these 250 slingshots uh, let alone uh, actually see one in this uh, better than new uh, type of condition and Steve's certainly managed to uh, use as many original uh, new old stock parts as he possibly could when he was building this bike but uh, as with all of these older classics it's getting harder and harder uh, to find parts uh, to keep them going. But uh, from the bike's first purchase in 2011 uh, for just £500 to its eventual uh, completion in 2022, 11 years uh, had elapsed and it's said that it took uh, Steve six of those years just to try and track down uh, all of the bits and pieces that he needed uh, to even start the build uh, of this bike. But you have to agree that uh, the weight and uh, all of Steve's hard graft has certainly paid off and this uh, Suzuki 250 was just uh, one of three bikes that Steve had on display at Telford this year with the other two uh, being a Thorpe SR500 Kawasaki and uh, a 1979 400 Michael, uh, which uh, we're also going to take a look at uh, very soon here on uh, CDB TV. Now, as to whether uh, Steve's 88 RM250 is going to be put back on the track or maybe even be sold on, uh, I don't actually know. But uh, if it was uh, to be put up for sale and then sold, then uh, the buyer is surely uh, going to pick up one of the best examples of one of these uh, Suzuki's uh, from that uh, particular uh, year. But I have seen a few of Steve's other dirt bike restorations that he's completed in the past and uh, they've all been top uh, quality. So who knows, maybe uh, he's going to be another guy that we should uh, keep in touch with for future supplies of bikes uh, for classic dirt bike uh, TV because it's great that uh, the work that these guys do to refurbish and restore these older bikes to such a high level and then uh, share them uh, so that we can all uh, relive and look back at those golden days when the likes of our uh, RM250 Suzuki were doing battle uh, with many of the other Japanese and European motocrossers on racetracks across the globe. But for me personally, this has uh, got to be one of the best 88 RM250s I've seen in quite uh, some time. So there you have it, that's uh, Steve uh, Coughlin's uh, lovely R RM250 Suzuki from 1988 and uh, we'll also uh, be featuring another uh, lovely bike uh, from Steve's collection in a future video here on uh, my channel so look out for that. Right, coming up next here on CDB TV we're going to take a look at this uh, 1992 KX500 uh, Kawasaki. Now this particular bike here uh, was ridden uh, to great success uh, by American rider uh, John uh, the Junkyard Dowd at the 2013 Farley Castle MX uh, DN event. So we'll be taking a look at this uh, super quick uh, machine when we return to CDB uh, TV. But for the time being, thanks once again for having a look at my channel. So until the next time, it's uh, goodbye for now. <music>